This week's lab is going to cover some environmental factors such as pH, osmotic pressure, temperature, and also oxygen concentration. So we'll start out by talking about pH first. And pH is the negative log of hydrogen, concentration of hydrogen, so please know that. And below 7 is considered acidic and above 7 is alkaline. So a neutral pH then is a pH of 7. So for your exam and quizzes, please know these classifications that acidophiles grow well below a pH of 5.5, neutrophiles between 5.5, and alkalophiles above a pH of uh, 8.5. Now, <clears throat> if you put a microbe in a pH that's either too high or too low, you will... Uh, disrupt the membrane, and you will also damage enzymes. So basically your enzymes are going to denature. So if you go too far outside, for instance, with a neutrophile, if you go below 5.5, it will denature. If you go above 8.5, it's going to denature as well. Now, in regards to salt concentrations, I'd like you guys to know what a halophile is. And a halophile is any microbe that can grow in 3% or greater NaCl. So again, halophiles can grow in a salt concentration above 3%. So we have some that go to the extreme and grow like at 25, all the way up to 25%, but you just have to know halophiles, uh, 3% or greater. And some terms that I hope you're familiar with, like isotonic, in an isotonic solution, um, no water uh, is going to be moving back and forth, or if it does, uh, there's no net change. Hypotonic, hypotonic, water moves in. Hypertonic, water moves out of the cell. So if you take a look at the other videos that I have, basically you set up different types of bacteria, and then what you do is you look for uh, the growth in the tubes. And if you have no growth, it'll be clear. If you have excellent growth, it'll be kind of cloudy. And then basically you would fill out a chart similar to this to determine if it's an acidophile, it would grow best at four. Again, acidophile will grow best at 4, a neutrophile would grow best at 7, and an alkalophile would be growing best at a pH of 10. Now, as far as salt goes, what you would look for, class, is whether or not the microbe grew in the 8% or 10% tube, so anything greater than 3. And if it grows in that salt concentration, then 8% or 10%, it would be considered a halophile. Now, what about oxygen and temperature? So again, class, please take a look at the classifications and the temperature ranges here and study these for your test. And one thing to keep in mind with temperature, if you go at a very low temperature, below the range, you slow metabolism down. Again, below the range, you slow metabolism down. However, if you go at a temperature above the range, so let's look at mesophiles for instance. Let's say you put your microbe at a temperature above 50, you're going to kill it because enzymes and proteins denature. Okay? So too high denatures, too low, it slows down the metabolism. Now we have microbes that can grow outside of their range and actually grow in the refrigerator. Those are known as psychotrophs. So please know a psychotroph is a microbe that grows outside of its range, can grow in the refrigerator, and it can cause food spoilage. And again, this just shows you some of those temperature ranges ranges again that microbes can grow in. Now, when it co comes to oxygen, microbes uh, have different requirements. So please know these different categories. Obligate aerobe requires oxygen to grow. 
obligate aerobe requires oxygen. Microaerophile grows in a low percentage, 5 to 10 percent oxygen. A facultative anaerobe grows with or without oxygen, with or without, but uses oxygen if it's present. Aerotolerant anaerobes, however, uh, grow whether or not oxygen is present or not, but it's not going to use it. Okay, so it grows with or without, but doesn't use oxygen. And obligate anaerobes cannot tolerate oxygen. In fact, it's actually toxic to them, so they will not grow in the presence of oxygen. Then how can we culture these microbes? Well, what we do is we use a media called FTM, fluid thioglycolate. And these tubes just represent where you would expect to find the growth of an obligate aerobe, facultative anaerobe, and obligate anaerobe. Obligate aerobes, because they require oxygen, will found, be found primarily at the top of the tube, maybe a little bit into it. The facultative anaerobe prefers the oxygen, so it grows really well, but as time goes on, it will grow throughout the tube. Obligate anaerobes, on the other hand, will start to grow at the bottom because that's uh, where no oxygen is, and then they start to grow up until they hit a point where there's oxygen and they stop growing. So how can obligate aerobes and facultative anaerobes survive in oxygen and while the obligate anaerobes don't? Well, it turns out they possess enzymes. So please know these three enzymes. Superoxide dismutase, catalase, and peroxidase. Again, superoxide dismutase, catalase, and peroxidase. And know that they can destroy harmful oxygen so that different bacteria can grow in oxygen. Now again, please know for your exam and your quiz that we use FTM media, okay, fluid thioglycolate media, to culture these microbes. And know that FTM binds oxygen, it binds oxygen, and oxygen is given off when it's heated. Again, FTM binds oxygen and oxygen is given off when the tubes are heated.